Hello again, everybody. This is Steve Callis. Speaking of sports, I encourage you to go to westchestercountypost.com, click on sports articles, click on sports videos. You'll find a lot of sports information there. Today, we're going to talk about concussions and CTE, chronic traumatic encephalopathy, and we're going to go farther than League of Denial, the wonderful PBS Frontline documentary, and the wonderful book of the same name. Many of you know about the way the NFL covered up for at least 20 years, uh, probably more, uh, the knowledge that was out there about CTE, about brain trauma, about concussions, uh, and now it's out into the open. The major players in that was there is a 2017 study by Dr. Ann McKee, who's up at Boston University. Uh, it was originally discovered by Dr. Bennett Amalu, uh, when he looked at the brain of Mike Webster in 2002, and he was the first to discover CTE. And he made his findings known, and, and as a result of his involvement, he was eventually shunned and dismissed by the NFL. Uh, he wound up eventually moving out to California, where he's still working. He's authored three books on the subject, uh, and I encourage you to look at Dr. Bennett Amalu's website. But Dr. Ann McKee in 2017, uh, a doctor who had looked at thousands of brains with respect to Alzheimer's, uh, now has become the main expert on CTE. And in 2017, she looked at 111 NFL brains, and 110 of them had CTE. I should stop here to read you the definition of CTE. Quote, CTE is a degenerative brain disease found in athletes, military veterans, and others with a history of repetitive brain trauma. In CTE, a protein called tau forms clumps that slowly spread throughout the brain, killing brain cells. CTE has been seen in people as young as 17, but symptoms do not generally begin appearing until years after the onset of head impacts. Now, as you may know, CTE can only be discovered after someone dies, and that's when the brains are examined. They're trying to find a test for it now, uh, but we don't have that quite yet. But Dr. McKee in 2017, in addition to finding CTE in 110 out of 111 NFL brains, also found in 87% of 53 college brains and 29% of high school brains, again, all of people who have died, um, this is an epidemic. And I think she's the one who has now come out with the studies. There aren't a lot of studies. We'll talk about a few others, including hardly any for women. But Dr. McKee, Dr. Amalu, and Chris Nowinski, who is also up at Boston University and was in charge of literally tracking down the brains and getting people to donate their brains to Dr. McKee at Boston University. Uh, he's a hero as well. All three of these people are national heroes, in my opinion. But we want to go beyond football. Obviously, you know all the banging in football, especially with offensive linemen. Mike Webster, the first example, was an offensive lineman. And many other of these guys are offensive linemen. It's not just limited to linemen. Wide receivers have it. Running backs have it. You know the crashes that happen in football. But I'd also like to talk a few about a few other sports beyond football. And I'd like to talk about them at the high school and college level. As I said previously, uh, in high school football players, people who just played in high school and who died at the age of 18 or committed suicide at the age of 21, uh, there is evidence of CTE, which was something at the time that was shocking to Dr. McKee because she had never seen it in a young person. But now there are more studies being conducted. Now it's very clear. Look, the longer you play and bang heads, the worse your chance of getting it. But even at a young age, which led to a more recent discovery of subconcussive hits. Now, subconcussive hits are those hits that you have on every play in a football game. And they happen all the time. You're not diagnosed with a concussion, but quite frankly, over time, it's been shown by Dr. McKee and others that subconcussive hits can also lead to CTE. And that's particularly scary if you're the parent of a of an 8, 10, 12, 14, 16-year-old. This is not just for pro football players who played for 20 years. This can be for people who have just played a few years pre-high school into high school, a few more years in college. And again, as we just said, the uh, percentages, the longer you play, the more of a chance there is. 
But I'd like to go beyond uh, high school. I'd like to talk to you about a recent study that looked at high school sports concussions in the United States over a 10 year period. And here's what they found. Obviously the biggest problem is in boys football where over half of the concussions detected by this study, which came out in 2017, um, stated. But here are some other uh, problems. Girls soccer, girls basketball, boys wrestling, boys soccer, and boys basketball. There were the next, these were the next five sports after football in this study that was done by the American Journal of Public Health, published in 2018 in the American Journal of Public Health. Um, but there are other sports and other studies, and I, I don't want to talk too much about that one study other than to give you the results as I just did, but also to say this was looking at the whole country, and there are other sports that are more limited in terms of the scope. They're not played all over the country, and that gives you sports like ice hockey, which you would imagine if you know anything about ice hockey, very dangerous sport, and you can certainly get concussions easily in ice hockey. Boys and girls lacrosse, of course, rugby, and also girls field hockey. So these are the ones that come up in studies throughout the country. But if you're looking at the whole country as opposed to a certain region, for example, in the Northeast, I know there's a lot of uh, lacrosse is played in the Northeast. I don't think it's all over the country. If you talk about hockey, maybe in the Midwest, a little in the Northeast, I don't think there's a lot of hockey down in Florida and Texas, so you get the point. And if you have an understanding of the sport your child is playing, and you should, then you should make an effort to try and understand what's the potential for head-to-head -head contact, for getting banged against the boards in hockey, for getting hit with a ball or a stick in field hockey, for collisions in rugby if somebody plays rugby. Um, and things of that nature. So have an understanding that these things can not only start young, but it can be in many other sports. This is not just a football issue. Um, other things I wanted to mention, there are no CTE studies, zero, right now, on women in sports, girls in high school, women in college, women professional athletes. But for the first time, and I want to read you the name of this study, for the first time this year, uh, 20 female soccer players, and there's some big names I'll give you in a moment, but 20 of them have joined the following study. It's called the SHINE study. Uh, it started in July of this year, so it's only a few months old, but it stands for Soccer Head Impacts and Neurological Effects Study, the SHINE study, and you've already had some very famous women soccer players. If you follow women's soccer and all their success over the last Going back to the early 1990s, you have the following women who have not only signed up for the study, but will donate their brains after they pass away to see if they have CTE. And the four big names I would name are Michelle Akers, Brandy Chastain, Abby Wambach, and Megan Rapino, who of course was a superstar this past year in the Women's World Cup. I'll talk specifically about Michelle Akers because she's now about 50 years old and she was well known for heading the ball. The biggest problem in soccer is you can have head-to-head -head collisions, of course, in soccer by the net trying to head a ball in. But just the general fact of heading a ball can be very dangerous. Happens in boys' soccer and men's soccer, but it's more prevalent, they believe, in women's soccer and girls' soccer because girls get more concussions than boys percentage-wise and... There are studies to show that already, but this particular study, when these women donate their brains, Michelle Akers said she thought she tried to hit the ball 15 or 20 times a game. She played many years, and she's already worried at the age of 50 that she sometimes forgets something, and she doesn't know just yet how to divide the normal aging process of forgetting things versus what happens if she can't remember somebody's name who's a good friend of hers, for example. And that study is very important because A, it's the first one involving women only, and B, it's in girls' soccer and women's soccer, which is probably one of the biggest areas of concussions for women. Um, so again, the warning here is, and I had a daughter who played soccer at the age of 10 or 11 or 12. We really didn't know much about it. We really didn't want her to head a lot just as a general intuition thing. But if you're gonna play soccer at an elite level now, you pretty much have to head the ball. So again, something to look at. Some doctors say you shouldn't be allowed to head the ball at all until you're 12 or 14. Doctors also in football say you should not play tackle football between until you're at least 12, if not 14. 
a lot of leagues are becoming flag leagues for, uh, for smaller children. Uh, I want to give you two more things before I conclude, uh, both of which, one of which is a quote from a Pro Football Hall of Famer. I want to conclude with that. But first, I want to read other studies of high school sports, and this might be somewhat repetitive, but there might be additional sports. But there are other high school studies that say uh, the worst concussions, the most concussions are in football, of course, but here are other sports you should take a look at. After football, boys hockey, boys lacrosse, girls lacrosse, girls soccer, girls field hockey, and boys wrestling. I didn't even uh, mention wrestling. There's a lawsuit of professional wrestlers, six of whom have been diagnosed with CTE. So it's spreading to other sports as well. But again, educate yourself as parents. The final thing I want you to read is a quote from Harry Carson. You New York Giant fans know who Harry Carson is. He's a Hall of Fame linebacker who played for the New York Giants back in the glory days of the 80s with Lawrence Taylor and Phil Simms and that whole group. But Harry Carson, very bright guy, very articulate. He studied this since he retired in the early 90s. Uh, and he's now considered an expert who was also a pro football player who did that head banging week after week, year after year, and has his own concerns about himself. But here's what he said about what you should think if your child is going to play football. And I strongly urge you to at least consider what Hall of Famer Harry Carson says. Quote, from a physical risk standpoint, you know what you are doing when you sign your kid up, that he can hurt his knee. Okay, but what you should know now is your child could develop a brain injury as a result of playing football. It's not just on the pro level, it's on every level of football. The question is, do you want it to be your child? Close quote. So I would encourage you all to get educated. Uh, go to the Concussion Legacy Foundation website. Uh, where all the doctors from Boston University are involved in that website, Chris Nowinski as well. Uh, I encourage you to get educated, but not just about football. Please look at whatever sport your child is playing and make some informed decisions before you allow them to play, especially at a younger age. This is Steve Callis, speaking of sports. We'll see you down the road.